In this video, I'm going to show you the difference between degenerative disc disease and a disc herniation and or bulge. Hey everyone, I'm Sebastian at Performance Play Sports Care, part of the locally world famous chiropractors in Coast Mesa, California. I'm going to use these two models today to show the difference between the two. However, when we talk about a disc bulge and or herniation, just know that we're talking, we're going to talk in more broad terms today because I can't change what the model's doing necessarily. But degenerative disc disease versus a disc injury, I think is going to be a very good un, uh, thing for you guys to understand moving forward as you're seeking care. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. We have many more videos on disc bulges, disc herniations, and degenerative disc disease on our channel. Also, if you want to know a little bit more detailed information about your back and different diagnosis that it could be, we have a webinar in the corner that you can take, take advantage of too. Now, I'm first going to start just by showing you generally the difference between the two with the models. The first one is that the degenerative disc disease, if you look between the two models, generally one has less disc space. I guess I should start first by giving you some general uh, uh, anatomical structure so you can get an idea of what we're talking about. This is a vertebral body, this is a vertebral body, this is a nerve, and this is a disc, an intervertebral disc. Okay? These are mirror images of each other. And you'll notice that one side probably has much more disc height than the other. Take a moment and see which one that is. Most of you probably noticed that it's this guy. He looks a lot more plump. It looks like there's a sandwich with a little bit more meat in it. And this is an example of somebody who hasn't had quite as many back issues as this person over here. Typically, the, de de the, the degenerative disc aspect of people's problem usually comes over time af after they've had repetitive just disc injuries and they lost pressure within the disc which allows flattening to occur and then some of the subsequent degenerative findings such as bone spurs and arthritis will grow around it but generally it's not the same mechanics of the of a symptom generating structure in this case, the disc may not actually be the symptom generating structure, it's just a sign of how you used your spine. There's other things that can be symptom generating structures such as a joint or a nerve root as it comes out, and I'll cover that in a second when we, after we go to this other model. Now the disc injury, generally speaking, it happens with flexion and maybe rotation, but generally flexion and compression or flexion under load, okay? Flexion under load looks like this. Actually, the first side to say this is the back side of the spine here, and this is the front side. So flexing the spine looks like this, all right? This spine moves a lot better than the other one, and it's not because this one has a disc injury, this is because this one's more gummy, all right? So this is flexion. This is something like doing a cat cow, a child's pose, picking up an object, a light object maybe. But now if you start to add something to flexion, such as a compressive force, then we start to have a little bit more problems. And so I'm just gonna slide this guy around because I believe the disc injury in this model is more on this side. So now this is the front of me. Now I'm gonna flex the spine here and you can see a little slice happening right into there. But the cool thing is, is that generally with flexion, without compression, there's not a lot of disc material that moves out. The disc material I'm talking about here is in the center there, we have the jelly with the jelly in the donut, as you say. And as you start to compress one side of the jelly donut, it starts to migrate the other direction, okay? So if I flex the spine, generally, you can see it because there's actually a, uh, already a cut there. On the other side, you won't, you won't necessarily see it as much because there hasn't been a cut formed. However, let's just say this cut wasn't there. Flexion is generally okay, all right? Now, as we start to compress the spine too, you see something start to come out of the model itself. So flexing, flexing it and compressing it, you start to see jelly work its way out of this hole here. Now as that jelly starts to work its way out, it may, may also compress on a nerve root which comes out of the same hole, but uh, I ripped it out and you can see them over here. All right, you know, we, saw, we use this model quite a bit over here, so sometimes it gets abused. Now, Flexion and compression generally creates that, 
all right? With that comes a, lo a loss of pressure within the disc itself, and then the flattening may occur. Now, remember what I said about flexing and compressing. This is normally people that have this type of problem, some, some type of pain associated with their back and a disc injury, normally rounding their back, bending forward tends to create more issues. The opposite is oftentimes true with people with degenerative disc disease, mainly because there's not actually a current injury going on at the disc itself, it's actually more of the other components in the back. And so now as we go through here and look a little bit, we see there's a facet joint and there's a facet joint right there. You can see this one's a little bit more abused. This person has probably put a lot of pressure through the back side of their spine, like the facet over the years, and the body's natural response to load is to grow a little bone around the area, all right? It's trying to help out. We can also see that the space right here on this more normal side is larger where this nerve root comes out than on this side. It just looks generally less, okay? And that's because there's not only the facet, part of the facet joint is growing in there, but also it's that the space on the disc is generally less. And so the hole has started to narrow because there's a loss of height. So in this scenario, more people will have pain with extension, walking, bending backwards, yoga poses, tend to bother these types of people. Their hamstrings feel chronically tight, their hip flexors do too. They may have sacral pain, SI joint pain, and so on. While this person has more low back excruciating, I'm stuck on the floor, I can't physically move, it's worse in the morning, it's worse when, worse when I cough. Sometimes they'll have leg pain and sciatica, but not always. This person, it's a very different rehab process, okay? We don't treat these two types of people the same. They actually have very different rehabilitation, all right? Neither one of them full, uh, always require surgery or injections or medications, but usually supporting the spine to make it so you have a decompressive effect that happens around the spine is best practice with a, de de with a degenerative disc model. Other things that happen too is, again, you can get nerve root pressure as the hole has started to become more occluded, which can create sciatica or pain into the leg or even into the calf. So I hope that gives you guys a little bit of insight about the differences between the two. I know it's not super easy oftentimes to understand, so I do suggest you watch this video again. And generally speaking, we can consider these two types of back pain. This is what happens mo mainly with people who are a little younger. This happens with people who are a little bit older, but it's not mutually exclusive either. These people tend to have more pain with coughing, sneezing, bearing down, sitting on a toilet, sitting for prolonged periods of time, and actually getting out of bed first thing in the morning. While these people tend to feel better in the morning, worse in the afternoon, it feels more and more painful with compression, their back feels stiff, and they start to feel in their SI joint, sacrum, uh, and even into the buttocks, upper glute area. So these are the differences. Uh, if you guys look, want more information, we do have the webinar on the corner, which pops up, but also too, we have other things on our channel about degenerative disc disease. If you're really looking for help though, we can help you where we see people virtually and in person for this. Like I said before, these two people need different rehabilitation programs. They require different exercises, different stretches, and different modifications of activity. Typically, we are, most people don't get these problems because of an accident. I know some people do, slip and falls, um, uh, sporting injuries, and so on, but a lot of people it just pops up out of nowhere. It's typically a problem with how you've been treating your body over time and your body's starting to sit, speak up. And so normally when we give people things to do, we also have to remove and change some of their habits. Where are some of our old habits? So if you guys are looking for help, we can certainly help you. We specialize in low backs and hips and groins. We'll see you guys next time and all of our contact is below.